Previously on my channel, I discussed a movie called Wolves at the Door, a 2018 movie about the Manson family cult that had a 0% score on Rotten Tomatoes. That low score put the movie in the Rotten Tomatoes Hall of Shame, along with 44 other movies that have received the very rare 0% score in the last 40 years. That video was a ton of fun to make, so today I wanted to make another video talking about another movie in that illustrious Hall of Shame, and similarly figure out how it ended up with its 0% score. That unfortunate movie is the 2008 film One Missed Call. Of all the 44 other 0% movies, I'm fairly certain One Missed Call is technically the most hated. 81 different critics reviewed One Missed Call, and all 81 did not like it. That is a very high number. The other 0% movies don't have nearly that many bad reviews. For example, Starving Games has 9 reviews, Highlander 2 The Quickening has 24 reviews, Super Babies 2 Baby Geniuses only has 46. I could not find a single movie on the 0% list that came even close to One Missed Call's number of negative reviews. It's almost impressive that so many saw this and not one critic said it was at least fine, passable, or decent. So why was One Missed Call so hated, and what is it even about? One Missed Call is a remake of the 2003 Japanese horror movie of the same name. Back in the early 2000s, studios were buying the rights to any Japanese horror movies they could find. It was like a modern gold rush, though instead of searching for gold nuggets, studios were scrambling to get their hands on scary Japanese ghost girls. Hollywood is well known for its trends. If one type of movie succeeds, then we will get 10 more copycats in the next few years. We've seen this especially in the horror genre, with the found footage trend of the 2010s, the torture porn trend of the 2000s, and the slasher boom of the 1980s. After the massive success of The Ring in 2002, with it making over $250 million worldwide, the next Hollywood trend was American remakes of popular Japanese horror movies. In 1998 there was Ring, four years later there was The Ring, in 2000 there was Juon, four years later there was The Grudge, Dark Water in 2002, American Dark Water in 2005, Pulse in 2001, American Pulse in 2006, the original One Missed Call in 2003, then this American remake in 2008. At this point the bottom of the barrel was being scraped, even though the trend was reaching its end, studios were still trying to squeeze every last remaining dollar out. But rather than adapting the best of the best when it comes to J-horror, studios were now at the point where they were adapting movies like One Missed Call, which only had a 44% critic score. That's definitely not a terrible score, but it's also far from a solid foundation to be building from. This is one of the major reasons One Missed Call was doomed from the start. The studio was quickly rushing out a remake of an already so-so Japanese horror movie to cash in on a dying trend. Unlike The Ring, which hired Gore Verbinski, director of multiple Pirates of the Caribbean movies, or The Grudge, which hired Takashi Shimizu, director of the original Grudge movies, One Missed Call instead opted to hire an unknown director. Now I absolutely do not want to blame the writer and director exclusively, but we are starting to put the pieces together soulless remake of an already subpar horror movie to cash in on a trend, rushed production, and an inexperienced writer-director combo helming the production. The issues are now starting to show themselves. Although one issue One Missed Call didn't have was its funding, as this movie had a budget of $20 million. I'll get into my review of the movie itself very soon, but just as a small spoiler, One Missed Call absolutely does not look like it cost $20 million. There are no well-known actors, the whole movie is shot in the city, mostly inside houses, there are no major stunts. That number is shocking. When you compare the $20 million budget to other horror movies, it is even more unbelievable. For example, the original Saw cost just $1 million. Insidious also cost $1 million. The new Halloween sequel cost $10 million. A Quiet Place cost $17 million. Both the 2004 and 2020 Grudge remakes cost only $10 million, and yet One Missed Call somehow had a budget of $20 million, 
I have absolutely no idea where this money went. I guess to this point, I haven't even fully explained what One Missed Call is about. One Missed Call tells a story of several strangers who start receiving voicemails from their future selves, messages which include the date, time, and some of the details of their impending deaths. Sounds like a cool premise on paper, right? Everyone has a fear of death. No one wants to know when they'll die or how it'll happen. The idea of getting this type of phone call sounds terrifying. One Missed Call, in theory, could be a solid horror movie. But as you could probably guess from, well, every other piece of evidence I've presented so far in this video, One Missed Call is thoroughly terrible. It's not offensively bad. It's not like The Room or Silent Night Deadly Night 2, where it's in your face bad or so bad it's good. Garbage day! Huh? No! One Missed Call is just completely bland. The characters are generic, even for horror movie standards. We never learn anything about the lead character, other than the fact that she likes to wear headbands and cardigans. This college student and the 40-year-old detective have the most forced movie romance I've ever seen. Besides the weird age difference, they have just negative chemistry. One Missed Call is arguably the most boring horror movie I've ever seen. And honestly, it's barely a horror movie. CGI ghosts look bad even for 2006 standards. There is one ghost baby that is hilarious to look at. Every death is the same. Someone gets a call, they freak out for two days and see lame visions of centipedes and weird eye ghosts, then they have a final destination wannabe death where they walk right into traffic. Even if there wasn't some supernatural curse going on, these jaywalking morons would have died anyways. And it just blows my mind. How many of the deaths happen in broad daylight? What a great way to set up a creepy atmosphere. Your CGI ghosts already look painfully bad, but you're not doing them any favors by setting your horror movie during lunchtime. Every line of dialogue is pure exposition. Characters say the most brain dead things to each other, like, hey, today is Friday, or that phone has no battery in it, or hey, your name is Sarah. It's like the movie not only thinks the audience is dumb, but they were also in a coma. The curse in One Missed Call is so convoluted. What happens is that if you have your phone number in the contact list of someone that dies, you have a 1 in 100 chance of being selected, and then you get a voicemail from the present with audio from the future predicting your death. Then you'll see centipedes for two days until you die that death, then the ghost will take your phone, call someone on your contact list, and restart the process all over. It's all just a fucking mess. And look, the original One Missed Call is far from incredible. It largely has the same story issues that this movie suffers from. But the execution is on a whole new level. Just look at the difference in some of these scenes. There's tension here, there's clear intent to build atmosphere. The shot choices are purposeful, there's patience and clear framing choices, it has a distinct visual style. Even just look at how different the ghosts look. That is fucking terrifying. Now look at the remake. How do you copy something directly and still make it so much worse? It's clear this remake had no heart, no real vision. They just threw in CGI ghosts on fully lit daytime street corners and called it a day. So now to answer the question of this video, why does the One Missed Call remake have a 0% score? This time around, I fully understand the 0%. One Missed Call may not be the most outright bad movie in the 0% club, but I can't imagine any single person sitting through this mess and having a positive reaction. Anyways, those are my thoughts on One Missed Call and discussion of why it has a 0% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Did you have the misfortune of seeing it? 
Have you seen the original? Let me know in the comments below. As well, let me know what 0% Rotten Tomatoes Hall of Shame movie you'd like me to talk about next. Right now, I'm deciding between low-budget superhero movie Max Steel or John Travolta crime drama Gaudy. If you like this review, please subscribe. I post new horror rants, reviews, commentaries, and deep dives on Fridays. As well, on Mondays, I post quick two-minute recommendations for horror movies available to watch on Shudder, Netflix, and Amazon Prime. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.